If you're new here, my name is Laura, and if you're not new here, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about my 11 easiest houseplants to take care of. In my experience, these have been the easiest houseplants that I've owned. Um, I found them the easiest to take care of, the least finicky, and a lot of these you can find at any box store or any nursery. They're pretty easy to come by, but a couple of these are a little hard to, harder to come by, a little bit rare, um, but that doesn't make them hard to take care of. So let's get started. The first plant I have is a holiday cactus. So there's different varieties of this, um, and from my understanding, the real difference is that they bloom during different times of the year. So you have Christmas cactuses, Easter cactuses, Thanksgiving cactuses, and I think that just depends. Their name is based on when they bloom in the year. So these are super easy to take care of. Um, they really thrive on neglect is what I've found. They don't like a lot of direct light, so I have mine in a bathroom. Um, I think it has, hold on, let me think about this for a second. Okay, <laughs> my bathroom has one west facing window um, and my shower curtain is kind of a sheer shower curtain. It sits between the window and my plant. So my plant isn't getting any direct west light at all during the day, but it is getting indirect light the entire day. It also is getting a lot of humidity from the bathroom and I water it probably I don't know, every three weeks or so whenever I see so you can see the little plant here whenever I see it start getting wrinkled so I don't see any right now I watered this recently so none of them look wrinkly but whenever I see sorry this plant's a little dusty I don't know if you can tell uh, I clean my plants somewhat often but the ones in my bathroom get kind of neglected more but yeah whenever any of these little guys get get wrinkly, that's when I'll go ahead and give it a nice soak. I usually just soak it in my bathtub since it's already in the bathroom. So yeah, holiday cactus, that's the first plant on my list. The second plant on my list today is a Sansevera or a snake plant. They're also known as mother-in-law's tongue. There's a lot of different names for them. There's also a lot of different varieties of snake plants and they are very different shades of green or yellow or some of them can even come off a little bit black or white. They're super cool, super versatile. These don't need a ton of water either. Um, I have mine next to a north facing window in my bedroom. Um, I have this one there. I have a couple others in my bathroom where I have my holiday cactus and they get western light all day. Yeah, what I like about this plant is it doesn't need a whole lot. It also kind of thrives on neglect. The only real way to kill this plant is to overwater it or put it completely in a dark corner. I mean, no plant really can be completely in the dark. So make sure it's getting adequate light, um, you know, just some dappled light throughout the day and then I water this guy probably as often as I water my holiday cactus so about every three weeks or so. Um, I have a couple different varieties I'll pull a couple of them out so you can see the differences but what I like about snake plants is you can have like five or six different snake plants and they all look different so I'm gonna grab a couple different ones so you get an idea of that. These are two other varieties of snake plants that I own um, so as you can tell they look very different from the first plant I showed. This one I think is like a bird's nest. I don't know, I'm really bad with the names of the different varieties of snake plants. And then I love this one because it has that kind of striped pattern. And these are the ones I keep in my bathroom with that west facing window. And again, I water these probably every three weeks or so whenever I see that the dirt is completely dry. So I'll check them every maybe week or two. And then as soon as the dirt is completely dry, I will give them a nice soak. The third plant on my list today is none other than the ZZ plant. Um, what's an easy house plant video without a ZZ plant, am I right? This plant, again, super duper easy, thrives on neglect. I have it in my room about six or seven feet away from a north facing window. Um, I water it every month, month and a half, and it's just super easy. It just grows and grows when I got it. I got it over the summer, so like in August. And now it is January and so when I got it it was only these I don't know if you can see super well but it was only these two big stalks here and it has popped out all of that growth all this growth here in just like I don't know six seven months however long it's been but this is one of my plants that just like it grows and grows and grows and it gives you so much love without really expecting anything from me like it doesn't need high humidity doesn't need high light the only way to really kill this plant is to overwater it and so you really do want to be careful to not water it more than like once a month or so. Obviously if you have it under more light then it will need water more frequently but since mine is 
by a north facing window and it's like pretty far from that north facing window i do only water mine like once a month or once every month and a half and the new growth comes in this like lime green color i think that's so cool then it darkens and like the leaves get harder i don't know if you can really tell the difference in the texture of the leaves but these are really soft whereas these are like a lot more cardboardy um so they get darker as they as they mature and with ZZ plants, there's a lot of different varieties. There's like the Zen ZZZ, which is kind of like a shorter version of it. The leaves are kind of like curled more. Um, I don't have one of those to show you, unfortunately. But then there's also the ZZ Raven, which the growth comes in the same color, but slowly turns dark, dark jet black. And it's super, super cool. I have one of those in my bathroom as well. So I would absolutely recommend this plant if you are starting to get house plants and you're not really sure what you want or how to take care of plants or if you're looking to fill any corners of your room that might not get a lot of light or if you're a chronic underwater and all your plants are dying because you don't give them enough water 100 percent recommend this plant this plant is beautiful and it just grows and grows and grows and doesn't doesn't expect anything in return it's just beautiful the next plant on my list is the lemon lime maranta i know this might be kind of an unpopular opinion but i've loved my lemon lime maranta i have just thrown mine in a corner water it once a week and forgotten about it and it has grown so much i got it probably like november late november and it was like just these leaves down here and it has grown all of this new growth up here since late november and i think only one of the leaves is like a little bit crispy i have it in a corner between a north facing window and an east facing window and so it gets very dappled light. These plants do not like a lot of light or they will start kind of crisping up. They also like a lot of humidity. So I don't have a humidifier by there. And I've heard that some people argue that this doesn't actually work, but I've, I mean, I've had really great success with this method, but I keep like little mugs and like vials of water next to my lemon lime maranta. And I feel like that kind of helps up the humidity in that like little corner where I have it because I've just had the greatest luck with it and I live somewhere where like it's pretty dry like my house is running I live in Minnesota so my house is running the heating all the time and this plant has not crisped up for me and it has grown and grown and it's like just like right here it's putting out a new leaf I just love this guy you just have to remember to water it this plant definitely needs more water than any other plants that I've shown before in this video so make sure that you are not letting this plant dry if you let it dry out too much it is gonna go beyond the point of no return and this plant will not be coming back and it will be toasted and dead. So make sure you're watering it, you know, once a week or so, make sure the soil stays moist, but not soggy. They will also get root rot if they just sit in soggy soil. So my rule of thumb really is like once a week I'll water it and I'll fill those little mugs and vials with water and then I'll just leave it alone. Just make sure it's not getting direct light and then I'll just leave it alone. And it is just, oh, it's so gorgeous. It's like, Every time I walk by there, it just takes my breath away. Look at those leaves. The veining is just spectacular. I don't know, I just love this one. I love it. So that's my lemon lime maranta. I would recommend this to anyone who wants to like add a little fun plant to their house because this one's really, it's really beautiful. Up next, I have a plant that is not as easy to find as any of the other plants that I've shown so far. I think all the other plants that I've shown so far have been pre are pretty easy to find. You can find them at your local nurseries or at your local box stores even. But this plant is a little bit harder to find. This is a Monstera siltipicana. I love the foliage on this plant. It's so beautiful. And as the leaves mature, they do get fenestration like the Monstera deliciosa and like the Monstera anisonii, like all those kind of Monstera plants and all the plants with fenestration. This one will get that too. This is just a baby plant, so. This one has not gotten any fenestration yet, but I got this plant from Steve's Leaves. I ordered it online and it shipped spectacularly. I would recommend, like, clearly this is not sponsored by them. I am sponsoring myself, but <laughs> I would recommend ordering from Steve's Leaves. They have these plants. I've seen them in stock a couple times in the past, like, two months. So I'd recommend just taking a peek at their website and seeing if they have them in stock because this plant has grown so much for me. I got it less than a month ago. It was probably about this tall. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, it has grown all of these new vines and leaves, and it's so healthy and beautiful. And I have it next to a west-facing window. I water it when I feel that the couple, the top couple inches of soil are dry, and I just give it a nice soak, 
let it dry out again before I give it another nice soak. And I just have it next to that window. I don't even have it under any grow lights or anything. And it is just, it is growing. And we are in the middle of January. Like this, I love this plant. It is so beautiful. If you can get your hands on one of these, I would absolutely recommend it. It is a very, very easy, slightly rarer plant than the ones I've shown before in this video. This next plant I have, so I don't really know if it is common or easy to find. I've seen it here and there. I actually got this at my local grocery store, but I've only seen it there once. This was the only one I've ever seen there. And I've seen it at a local nursery once or twice, but I haven't seen it around a ton. And this is the orchid cactus. And I have found this plant so easy to grow, like so incredibly easy to grow. I have it hanging on the curtain rod on my east facing window in my dining room. And I just ignore it. I completely ignore this plant. It has put out so much new growth when I got it. I think I got this plant maybe in October, also maybe in November. I feel like I got a bunch of plants in October, November, but it had nothing hanging off the sides and none of these were starting to trail up the pot yet. So all this growth down the sides, this is all new in the past few months. And it's just so pretty. I water it probably every three weeks to every month. And I heard this one blooms really pretty. I've looked up some of the pictures, but mine hasn't bloomed yet. I and mean, I haven't even had it for a full growing season. So I hope it blooms for me in the spring. That would be so pretty. I don't even know when these bloom, but hope it blooms for me. Um, but yeah, this plant, and it's it's just so quirky. Like, I feel like if you like Hoya Compacta, if you like the, Hoya, the look of that Hoya Compacta, like, I think you'll like the look of this plant. And this one's so easy. I've killed like three Hoya Compactas already. I don't know what my problem is with them. This plant is just so, so easy to grow. I think it's just so beautiful. It's like such a statement piece. It just hangs there with its little curly, curly hairs. <laughs> so I'd recommend this plant if you can get your hands on it. Um, again, I'm not really sure how common or uncommon they are. Um, I, this wasn't pretty inexpensive, but again, I haven't really seen it around. So I would recommend it if you can get your hands on it. The orchid cactus, a good, good, easy plant. Up next, I have a uh, Hamelomina. I think is how you say it, emerald gem. This plant is so beautiful, pretty inexpensive to, and easy to find kind of at any big box store, your local nurseries. And if you like that look of like philodendrons and kind of those big leafy green plants, I would absolutely recommend getting your hand on one of these. I have this in a west facing window. I'm still working on my directions apparently. So yeah, this is in a west facing window in my kitchen. And I have noticed that this plant likes getting a lot of water. It dries up really quickly. I don't know if it just has like a really beefy root system or what, but this plant does need to get watered pretty frequently. This is a new leaf that just popped up. That's why it looks kind of a lighter green color. Um, but the leaves are just so beautiful. I water this plant maybe once a week, sometimes even more frequently. It is a very thirsty plant, but besides that, I never think about it. And it has already, when I got it, it was only these two leaves and it has already put out a third baby leaf for me so and it looks like maybe a new leaf is coming in i don't know but yeah homolomina emerald gem would absolutely recommend this to anyone who likes the big leafy plants it's just so shiny and gorgeous i love it up next i have my cebu blue it is oh i just love this plant the leaves are so beautiful they're kind of that silvery grayish blue color and this plant grows like none other. I got this plant probably like in September. I found it at my local grocery store actually. So I know they're a little bit hard to come by. I've heard a lot of people are kind of struggling. I'm trying to get the plant all the way in the frame. A lot of people are struggling to find a plant of this, like a full size plant. But I found it at big box stores. It's not super common, not super easy to find, but if you're kind of persistent and you can get your hands on one, I would recommend it. So I've had this plant since probably around September and you can see I trimmed it all the way down yesterday, but this plant hangs with my orchid cactus on my west facing window, no, east facing window in my dining room. And I, so I trimmed this yesterday and I have trimmed this plant since September, probably like five or six times. I've probably trimmed about a hundred nodes off of this, like nodes with, with leaves. It, was, it grows down to the floor in less than a month. Like this plant, I don't understand why it's so hard to get your hands on, like in, depending on where you are. I know, I don't know, things are different in every state, every country, whatever, but it can just be so hard to get your hands on one. And I don't understand why they grow so 
fast, like so stupid fast. Like this plant, it just, it's such a fast grower and it's just so beautiful. Sorry, the leaves are all kind of like facing one specific way because I think they all turn to face the window, but you can just see these beautiful leaves. Like some of them, like this one, for example, has more of that, oh, come on, focus has more of that gray look, whereas other ones are more green. Like, oh, this plant is just stunning. No two leaves are the same. And this one's another one that when it matures, it gets fenestrations, but, and it has to grow up. It's like very specific how to get it to mature correctly so that it can fenestrate. I don't have mine like on a totem pole or on a moth pole, so I don't know if mine will ever do that, but I don't think I've said anything about watering this plant. I don't know if I have, well, you get to hear it twice, but I water this plant. It's in a pretty small pot. I think I'm gonna have to repot it in the spring. It's probably close to being root bound, if not already root bound. But I water this plant once a week, maybe. Um, the way I can tell since, I mean, I don't know if you can really see in there. I can barely even see in there. But there's just so many leaves and it's so compacted right in the dirt that I can't stick my finger in there or like my humidity probe to check like how humid the dirt is. So what I do is I just like feel how heavy it is. I don't know if anyone else does this with their plants, but once it starts getting like light, if that makes sense, I just give it a nice water until it feels heavy again. I don't know. That's what I do usually with like my big hanging plants where it's like hard to get into the soil to check how, how wet it is. I just check how heavy it is. Like I just watered this a few days ago, so it's pretty, pretty heavy still. So Probably about once a week, I check on it every few days because again, it is pretty root bound in here. I'll be probably replanting this as soon as I can in the spring. Um, so it does need more water than probably if it was in a bigger pot, but would recommend this plant if you can get your hands on it. It is such a fast grower, easy plant to share with others. And it's just so beautiful and it's so easy to grow. Another plant, I water it and forget about it and then just admire its beauty. Up next, I have a Syngonium. I'm not quite sure what type of Syngonium this is. It's the one that has like the kind of like pink veining. Um, I got this one at Home Depot. Pretty inexpensive. I think it was like six or seven dollars. I know this for sure is not the white butterfly because I have one of those too. I also have a Syngonium Maria. That one has kind of burgundy colored leaves. But all the Syngoniums I've had are so easy to take care of. They don't like being super wet. They don't like being under a ton of light. But other than that, like you just water them once every like two or three weeks. That's what I do with mine. I keep mine, so there's this corner in my house where a south facing window is about, I don't know, six or seven inches from the corner. And then there's an east facing window about another four or five inches from that corner. And I keep all my Syngoniums on this table in that corner. And they are so happy there. I had one that I kept in front of a bunch of light. I think it was like next to my, right next to my south facing window. And it just crisped up and just like healed over and died. So just make sure this plant isn't getting a ton of light. This is a lower light plant, still needs light, obviously. And then it doesn't like its roots being wet all the time. So again, another plant I water every like maybe two or three weeks. This one, I just check the soil once it feels like it's getting dry all the way through. I will just give it a nice soak. I would recommend getting any Syngonium you can. There's some really beautiful ones out there and they are super easy to take care of. They grow like weeds and you can propagate them super, super easily. Up next, I have my Hartley Philodendron. I adore this plant. It is just, oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. The leaves are pretty massive for like a vining philodendron, in my opinion. I don't know. I've seen this plant with teeny, teeny, tiny leaves before. So when I saw this one at the store, I was like, I need it. Like, look how big that leaf is almost as the size of my hand. They're so beautiful. I found that this plant grows super fast. I, this is another one like the Cebu Blue that I showed you before. Cebu Blue. <laughs> like the Cebu Blue. Blue, 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 blue. Cebu Blue. Like the Cebu Blue that I showed you before. This is another one that I have trimmed countless times. I don't even know how many times it has had vines all the way to the floor. And this is hanging in a north window in my bedroom. So it's not actually getting a ton of light and it doesn't seem to care. It looks like since I put it in that window, it is getting a slightly smaller growth. So these are some of the newer leaves. They're a lot smaller than, let's see, these like massive leaves that it was getting. But I feel like it's still so happy. It's just shooting out new growth all the time. Like this is such a full plant. This is another one where I have to feel it to tell when it needs water because I cannot get into the soil. It's just so full in there. 
So another one where probably every two and a half, three weeks I'm watering this one. Since this one isn't getting as much light as my Sivu, I am watering this one a lot less frequently. But yeah, water it every two or three weeks when it's starting to feel not as heavy. <laughs> and I just have it hanging um, on the north window in my bedroom. And it is like, oh my goodness, look at this leaf. It's just so big. Just, they're so beautiful and the new vines come in. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but the new leaves come in kind of like this orangey color and then they slowly turn into this light kind of lime green and then darken up as they mature. They're just, it's such a beautiful plant. It's such a statement plant and it's so easy to take care of. So if you can get your hands on one of these, I think they're pretty easy to find. Um, I've seen them basically everywhere. Any nursery I go to has them, most like Home Depots and Lowe's and wherever like walmarts and stuff that carry plants usually have them and i know sometimes you can find them kind of in smaller pots but they grow so fast like this plant has probably grown like five or six times its size in less than a year so if you can find a small one don't worry it will grow i promise you it will grow <laughs> last but not least i have a philodendron silver sword so like the Monstera siltipicana that I showed earlier, this is another one that's a little bit more rare, a little bit harder to get your hands on because it's a lot more in demand. It's not getting quite mass produced to the same extremes that like pothos and stuff are. So this plant is a little bit harder to get your hands on, but holy moly, if you can get your hands on one of these, snag it, just, just get it. I've seen it starting to come into some box stores around where I live. People are like flocking to them, so maybe wait a little bit <laughs> and see if you can find one a little, a little later. But oh my goodness, this plant is just beautiful. The leaves are kind of the silver color. As you can probably see, it is just popping new growth everywhere. I have new leaves coming in probably daily. This plant is so happy. I have it in a west facing window. I water it every like maybe week and a half. I just like with all my other philodendrons, I check the soil when the top few inches are dry give it a nice good soak and then just leave it alone. I don't even have it under extra humidity. I just have it on my counter in my kitchen. And it is just, it is just popping out new growth left and right. I love this plant and it is so, so easy, especially because when you think like, oh, uh, you know, more hard to come by plants must always be harder to take care of or more finicky. And like, that's the truth sometimes, but like with this plant, it is not the truth. I was kind of nervous to get it because I was scared I'd kill it and then I'd cry forever. And so would my wallet and it would not be good, but it has just, it has thrived. This plant just, it thrives on its own. If you can get your hands on one of these, even like a little cutting or something, would highly recommend it, especially if you've been kind of on the fence about getting it because you're not sure if you can keep it alive or you're nervous about it, you know, being a little bit more pricey or a little bit more rare to replace if it does die, I wouldn't worry about that. I would honestly say just bite the bullet and get it if you can. Here's another baby leaf coming in. Oh, that's out of shot. Wow, nice job. There it is. Oh, they're so cute. Yeah, I love this plant. It is just, it stands out among all the ones I have. It really is one of my favorites. Those are all the plants that I'm gonna be talking about today. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something new and maybe you could throw a plant or two on your wish list to get next. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or anything else you wanna see from me, let me know in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down depending on how you felt about it. That also lets me know what kind of content you like to see. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching, bye.